In this video, we're introducing the Internet Control Plane, including understanding how to classify routing algorithms. Let's get started. Today, we're beginning Chapter 5, which continues looking at the network layer of the Internet Protocol stack, but this time from the perspective of the Control Plane. As before, we're using the slides provided by Carroz and Ross that accompany the textbook Computer Networking and Top-Down Approach, 8th edition. In this video, we're just going to introduce the chapter and the concepts of the control plane, as well as review how we distinguish the control plane from the data plane that we discussed in the previous chapter. So first, we'll look at some principles behind the control plane operations, which include routing algorithms, software-defined network controllers, and a bit about network management and configuration. Then, as with other layers we've looked at, we'll look at the specific instantiations and implementations of protocols used in the internet. For traditional routing protocols, we'll look at OSPF and BGP, and for SDNs, we'll look at the OpenFlow protocol, as well as the ODL and ONOS controllers. We'll also talk in more detail about ICMP and wrap up by looking at some network management protocols. So let's start with the introduction and a little review about what differentiates the control plane from the data plane. We spent the last several videos talking about chapter four, which covered the data plane of the IP layer. The data plane's job is to move packets from the input port of a router to the output port, making the correct forwarding decision along the way. The control plane looks at the big picture path of how the packets are going to get from a source to a destination, and it provides information to the data plane so that it can make the correct forwarding decisions. Traditionally, the control plane runs in all the routers and uses distributed algorithms to determine these end-to-end -end paths. More recently, we are seeing a move towards software-defined networking approaches, which centralizes the control in servers that are separate from the routers and have more information about the overall state of the network. In the traditional case, we have a packet arriving to the network with some destination address and the routers are going to use that destination address to look at their forwarding table, find the longest prefix match, and move the packet to the corresponding output port. These forwarding tables exist at all the interfaces on the routers, and they're created by a distributed routing algorithm that runs in the control plane across all the routers. So in traditional networks, the control plane and the data plane both operate within each router. In contrast, in the software-defined networking case, we again have our packet arriving, Routers look at the fields in the packet's header, including but not limited to the destination address. And again, they're going to match this against their local forwarding tables, but those tables come from outside the router. The SDN controller or controllers are remote and create the forwarding tables and distribute them to all the routers. So in this case, the division between control plane and data plane is also a division between the physical routers and the separate SDN controllers. With that quick review in mind, now we'll look at the most common routing algorithms in use in the internet link state and distance vector. A routing algorithm is a formalized process of finding a path through a network. We want to make an important distinction here that routing algorithms are not synonymous with routing protocols. Although often the terminology is used interchangeably, there is in fact a difference. The routing algorithm is the, the formalism or principle behind finding these paths through a network. A routing protocol takes an algorithm and wraps it in all the implementation details needed to make it function such as control messaging and packet header specifications. So in this chapter, we will first look at the routing algorithms and understand how they discover paths, and then we'll look at the protocols that implement those routing algorithms. When we talk about paths, we're just talking about the sequence of IP routers used to traverse the network. And again, we're talking about the network layer, so we don't include layer two devices in these paths. Also, we don't just want the routing algorithm to find a path, but we want it to find the best path for some definition of best. We can typically generalize best as the least cost path. In many cases, the cost is just the number of hops on the path, so we want the shortest path, but it's certainly possible to incorporate other metrics to be considered by the routing algorithm. Creating routing algorithms that perform as we want them to is one of the most difficult problems in networking. For the purposes of discussing routing, we typically look at the network as a graph of nodes and edges. And we may assume that all those edges has a cost one, or we may annotate the edges with a weighted cost. So in this graph, we have our nodes, which is the set of all the routers, and we have our edges, which is the set of all the links between the routers. And we identify each particular link as a pair of IDs of routers that it connects. If you recall back to our earlier videos, we said that virtually all links in the core of the network are point-to-point -point links, meaning they only have two routers attached to one link. So with our set of nodes and our set of edges, we can then identify the cost of each link between two routers. And then using this, we'll be able to build up and discover the cost of an entire path between a source and a destination. Different routing algorithms have some trade-offs in practice. 
And so we can classify them in terms of how rapidly they adapt to changes in the network and how much control information needs to be distributed between the routers. So at the top of the graph, we have link state algorithms, which require routers to share information globally throughout the network about all of their interfaces. And then on the decentralized end of the spectrum, we have distance vector algorithms, which only share information with their direct neighbors. We also have the option of static routing, where we could manually configure the routes in the routers, and they would not update automatically when things changed in the network, but would require human intervention. Dynamic routing, on the other hand, updates the forwarding tables automatically when changes are detected in network connectivity. That completes our introduction to the control plane and routing algorithms. In the next video, we'll start looking at the specifics of link state algorithms before moving on to distance vector algorithms. See you then. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.